Today, uh, I'm pleased to announce that after, after months of tough and thoughtful negotiations, I think we have an historic — I know we have a historic economic framework. It's a framework that will create millions of jobs, grow the economy, invest in our nation and our people, turn the climate crisis into an opportunity, and put us on a path not only to compete, but to win the economic competition of, for the 21st century against China and every other major country in the world. It's fiscally responsible. It's fully paid for. Seventeen Nobel Prize winners in economics have said it will lower the inflationary pressures on the economy. And over the next 10 years, it will not add to the deficit at all. It will re actually reduce the deficit, according to economists. I want to thank my colleagues in the Congress for their leadership. We spent hours and hours and hours over months and months working on this. No one got everything they wanted, including me. But that's what compromise is. That's consensus. And that's what I ran on. I've long said compromise and consensus are the only way to get big things done in a democracy, important things done for the country. I know it's hard. I know how deeply people feel about the things that they fight for. But this framework includes historic investments in our nation and in our people. Any single element of this framework would fundamentally viewed, would view, be viewed as a fundamental change in America. Taken together, they're truly consequential. I'll have more to say after I return from the critical meetings in Europe this week. But for now, let me lay out a few points. First, we face — and I know I apologize for saying this again we — face, we face an inflection point as a nation. For most of the 20th century, we led the world by a significant margin because we invested in our people, not only in our roads and our highways and our bridges, but in our people and our families. We didn't just build an interstate highway system. We built a highway to the sky. We invested to win the space race, and we won. We're also among the first to provide access to free education for all Americans, beginning back in the late 1800s. That decision alone to invest in our children and their families was a major part of why we were able to lead the world for much of the 20th century. But somewhere along the way, we stopped investing in ourselves, investing in our people. America is still the largest economy in the world. We still have the most productive workers and the most innovative minds in the world. But we've risked losing our edge as a nation. Our infrastructure used to be rated the best in the world. Today, according to the World Economic Forum, we rank 13th in the world. We used to lead the world in educational achievement. Now the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development ranks America 35th out of the 37 major countries when it comes to investing in early childhood education and care. We know how our children start impact significantly on how they'll finish. We can't be competitive in the 21st century global economy if we continue this slide. That's why I've said all along, we need to build America from the bottom up and the middle out, not from the top down, with the trickle-down economics that's always failed us. I can't think of a single time when the middle class has done well that the wealthy haven't done very well. I think of many times, including now, when the wealthy, the super wealthy, do very well and the middle class don't do well. That's why I propose the investments Congress is now considering in two critical pieces of legislation, positions I ran on as president, positions I announced when I laid out in a joint session of Congress what my economic agenda was. These are not about left versus right or moderate versus progressive or anything else that pits Americans against one another. This is about competitiveness versus complacency. Competitiveness versus complacency. It's about expanding opportunity, not opportunity denied. It's about leading the world or letting the world pass us by.